Hi, and thanks for watching the End Time Revival broadcast with Pastor Harold Smith. I'm your announcer, Jason Connors. The broadcast is recorded every Sunday morning at the Mark's First United Pentecostal Church, located on Academy Drive in Mark's, Mississippi. You can join the church for services every Sunday and Wednesday, or you can view past services at www.freegospelradio.com. This broadcast is made possible by the generosity of its viewers. You can help keep the broadcast going by sending your donation to Pastor Harold Smith, P.O. Box 373, Marks, Mississippi, 38646. Help us spread the word by mailing in your donation. And now, the End Time Revival broadcast with Pastor Harold Smith. feel the Holy Ghost here today. Let's everyone pray right now. Oh with you.
son called me this morning uh, he's feeling his call to the ministry and he's going to teach the young people Wednesday night and he wanted a few things and 
I told him he was said he's gonna teach on uh, uh, victory over the world, and I said, uh, well, now that takes in a lot of things. Uh, when the Lord was talking about the world, He was not talking about Marx, Chicago, New York, California. There is a spirit of the world that, that the Lord was talking about. When He said, love not the world, there's a spirit of the world. And that's the reason that the Lord has always taught in His Word to shun worldliness. Amen. And uh, so I was telling someone yesterday, this is a time when the church should be stronger than it ever has been since the first fruits of the Lamb. How many of you knows what the first fruits of the Lamb is? You know the Bible spoke about them, the 144,000. These are the first fruits of the Lamb that followeth Him whithersoever He goeth that has not defiled themselves with women. And what He was talking about, the women there, was false doctrine, false churches. Amen. So uh, that was the first... They loved God. They laid everything down. Amen. They sold everything. They sold out to God. They made up their mind that they was going all the way. Amen. And they were the first fruits of the Lamb. Come on. Hallelujah. Ooh, now don't get quiet on me, all of y'all. Come on. But these are, this is a time when the church should be stronger than it has ever been amen. since that day. That's it. Amen. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, Pastor. Thank God. Well, give me a good Mississippi nod if you can't say hallelujah. Amen. amen. Thank God. But we find just the opposite. There's more people turning back to the world today than they ever has been. Right. And the Bible said uh, that uh, in the last day perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their selves more than lovers of God. Come on. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, in the book of Proverbs, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to not have... A, as many songs maybe so I can get a little bit of this in and uh, the book of Proverbs the 14th chapter and the 12th verse right along with this and uh, it, for you that keep notes I want to preach this morning a little while on never everybody say never, never. turn back never turn back now there's two words that you ought to take out of your vocabulary as far as spirituality is concerned. Turn back. And uh, everybody look at your neighbor and say, I'll never turn back. I'll never turn back. And uh, the Bible said here, there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And it seems today that people want to go the way they want to go. Hallelujah to God. They're making their own rules as they go. And uh, But I'm telling you this morning. You see this black back book this morning? This is our road map. This is our time piece. This is our food. This is our strength. This is our salvation. Everything that we need is in this book. Come on. Amen. But he said, there is a way that seemeth right unto man. And uh, then turn over to Jeremiah, the fifth chapter, the 31st verse. This got a hold of me so much. Uh, 
the prophets, now listen, the prophets prophesy falsely. Listen, if you prophesy and it don't come to pass, you're a false prophet. Yes, sir. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. But people, people had rather hear something that's not true today that may have the truth. Ooh. Oh, thank God I'm getting a little more life now coming oh, to you. Hallelujah. But he said the prophets prophesy falsely. And they openly prophesy falsely. <coughs> and the priests bear rule by their own means. But this is the kicker. The people, Jesus the Lord said, my people love to have it so. Come on, honey. Hallelujah. Basically, they, as a matter of fact, they said one time, they said, don't tell us the truth, but prophesy unto us smooth things. Don't upset our apple cart none. Don't stir us up. But if you go to church, my friend, and all you do is shout, all you do is dance, uh, and you never get stirred in your soul about eternity. You have not had church like you ought to. Could we praise Him? Hallelujah. Oh, I need to hear this morning. Oh, I'm about to get kicked off here. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book of St. John, the 6th six, the six, the six chapter, 6th six to 6th verse. Notice what he said. From that time, from that time, many of Jesus' disciples, what did they do? They flocked around him by the multitudes? No, sir, brother. No. Said many of his disciples went back. They turned back. Woo. Oh, hallelujah. It scares me today when I see how easily folks come up here and get in this altar and pray until God touches them with the Holy Ghost uh, and they speak in that heavenly language and then two weeks later they're back out cursing using the name of God in vain uh, and going to the places of the world. This scares me. Bless him, Lord. Hallelujah. Him, Lord. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more. Walk no more with him. Oh, hallelujah. See, that scares me. Amen. I found Hiko Shatayenama. I found something on this road. I knew what it was to be lonely. I knew what it was to, to not know what was up there in the sky. I knew what it was to not know what, what the, my life was going to be. But one night, thank God, he came into my life. Amen. He baptized me with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I got a glimpse of not only this world, but the world to come. Come on. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it scares me when I see people treat this so lightly. Amen. That, uh, well, I'll just go back like Samson. I'll go back and pray through again. But you're going to pray through one time too many. And God's going to say, like he did about Saul, Get up, Samuel. Quit praying for him. I've turned him over to the devil. He's going to hell. Don't pray for him no more. Come on, Pastor. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Then Jesus said unto the twelve, what about you? While I'm preaching this sermon, wouldn't hurt for you to look in the mirror this morning. Look in your spiritual mirror. Come on, hallelujah. He asked his disciples, said, What about you? That's him. Will you go also? No, Lord. Oh, I like what Peter said. Where could we go? That's it. Come on. Woo! Amen. Oh, I like that old song, Randy. Where could I go? 
Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Needing refuge for my soul. some studying this week I used to wonder why that uh, God said about Ephraim he said Ephraim you're a silly dove and then he said another place he said Ephraim you're a half-baked cake you're a cake half-baked you never did get get complete hallelujah but then I read in Hosea, the fourth chapter, where that God had to write and say, Ephraim, and you know who Ephraim was. Ephraim and Manasseh was the sons of Joseph. Amen. But he said, Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. Anything, listen to me today. Anything that you put before God, that becomes an idol to you. You hear what I'm saying? It can be your home, your yard, your car. Hallelujah to God. There's some folks spend more time washing and polishing their car than they do on their face before God seeking His will. Come on, hallelujah. And then, everybody say, oh me. Oh, me. Everybody say, oh me. oh me. Then there are some folks that have made their couch their God. They have become a couch potato. Yeah. Just lay up there comfortable looking at that one-eyed devil. I can hear my brother-in-law now. He'll call me this day and say, you done quit preaching and went to meddling. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But here's one of the reasons why that God felt the way He did about Ephraim. In the book of Psalms, the 78th chapter, said the children of Ephraim being armed and carrying bows they had all the battle gear on. Listen, you can you can dress godly, you can dress holy, yeah. you can do all the things expected of you, but you got to have a heart. Thank God you've got to have a heart that loves God with all of your mind. Hallelujah. He don't just want your body, he wants your heart and your mind. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Lord, I feel His presence here today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it said the children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. Hallelujah. You know how they say, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. 
But they, some of them, that they get going the other way. Amen. But it's time to stand and fight for what you believe in. Hallelujah. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. You say, oh, I don't believe in fighting. Well, you, know, you better get out of the ranks of the Apostle Paul. Paul said, I've fought a good fight. I've kept the pace. I've finished the course. Thank God. He said, there's a crown of righteousness that is set before me. Because one day he made up his mind. He was never going to turn back. Thank God. And uh, God made a vow. Listen, it, it's you better listen to me this morning. You got a hold of the greatest thing that this world has ever known. There's nothing in the world like the power of God. There's nothing in the world like the Spirit of God. It'll change you. It'll change your life. It'll transform you. Hallelujah. But Ephraim went too far when he when he began to worship Baal and he turned God away and he began to worship Baal the Bible said that God made the declaration that henceforth and from now on they'd never be an old man they'd never be an old man in the lineage of Ephraim because of his sin and his transgression that ever one of them would be cut off in the flower of their youth. Hallelujah. You just stop and think. Amen. Because, uh, because of what granddad did. Amen. We can't ever get old. Amen. Because of somebody else's sin. We can't ever get old. You say, am I bro my brother's keeper? You are. Thank God. You gotta, you're going to have to answer. Amen. For how you live for God in this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you done got quiet on me again. But uh, there was uh, two of the, the lineage of Ephraim was the sons of Eli. Hope Nye and Pinehas. And you know the story how they both got killed because of their carelessness. In the temple of God. Hallelujah. They both got killed in battle. And the ark of God was taken. And uh, Eli fell off of the steps. And broke his neck. And uh, one, of the, one of the sons. was His wife was fixing to have a baby. And as she had her baby. She died and she named him Ichabod. And said because the glory. The glory is departed from Israel. I'm going to tell you something. Brother, I'm thankful for the glory of God this morning. I'm thankful that we can lift our hands and feel that connection from heaven to day. I don't ever want to turn back to this world. Let's stand and praise Him a little bit this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship and love you. We praise you and we love you, precious Savior. Thank you, lovely King. Thank you. I'm going to tell you, one of the scariest, to me, one of the most frightening scriptures in the whole Bible. I'm fixing to read it to you. You say, well, I've never had the Holy Ghost. Okay. But you've been around it enough. You've felt it. And God's going to hold you responsible. For every time you've heard the word and rejected it, he's going to hold you responsible for every time you've walked out of these doors and God dealt with you and you rejected him. There'll come a day you're going to want him and he's going to reject you. But listen to me. Like I told you, I've seen folks come out here and pray through. Oh, I'm here. I'm here forever. Two weeks later, they back cussing. Back in the world. Listen, listen here. 
in the book of Hebrews, the sixth chapter. For it is impossible. Everybody say impossible. Say it again. It's impossible. Impossible. Look at your neighbor and say it's impossible. It is impossible for those who were once enlightened. You've had a revelation of Jesus Christ. And have tasted of the heavenly gift. And were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. And have tasted of the good word of God. And the powers of the world to come. You see when we get, the Bible said that when we're worshiping God and He comes down in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost just comes down and the Spirit visits with us. When you see we're actually, there's angels here that you can't see. There's angels that are entertaining in this building this morning. And the Bible said we're made to sit where? In heavenly places. So he said, if you've tasted of the world to come, the word of God, and the powers of the world to come, listen, and if they fall away, listen, if they fall away, hallelujah, it's impossible to renew them again unto repentance. Seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Don't that scare you? Don't that frighten you? Just think if we had all of those here this morning that have prayed through the Holy Ghost in this church in the last 20 years. This church wouldn't hold them. But some of them out there today, it's impossible. They'll never come back. They're going to hell. Our friends are going to hell. Our friends are going to be lost. Apostle Paul, I believe if there was any disciple that had ever made up his mind, I believe this was him. He said one time in closing this morning, he said, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Do you have any battle scars this morning? Or have you just kind of been AWOL on the side a little bit. Do you really have any battle scars this morning? Paul said, I was beat five times by the Jews with forty stripes, save one. He said, I was beaten with rods. I was stoned. I was shipwrecked. I was in perils of water, perils of robbers, Perils in the city, perils in the wilderness. I knew what it was to have weariness, painfulness. I knew what it was to be hungry, thirst, fastings often. I knew what it was to be cold. I knew what it was to be naked. But one of the last things that he ever wrote before they took him to the chopping block and cut his head off. He said, I fought a good fight. I fought a good fight. Woo, hallelujah to God. Are you still in the battle today? Or have you been just kind of sitting on the sideline? Amen. It's time. We're living in the last day. Amen. Jesus said, 
when the Son of Man returns, would he find faith on this earth? Paul said, I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. I've finished my course. Now, therefore, there's a crown of righteousness. Woo! Hallelujah. How many of you, you want to make up your mind this morning more than ever before? You'll never turn back. I want you to come right now. Everyone that with.